Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cis loop ligand gated ion channels. Okay, so in this video what we're going to talk about is uh, the intracellular domain of cis loop ligand gated ion channels. So we're going to talk about the intracellular domain of these um, receptors. Okay, and um, by the way, the uh, cis loop ligand gated ion channels uh, are also often referred to just as the cis loop receptors. So I will write the intracellular domain of the cis loop receptors. So uh, that's just shorthand for cis loop ligand gated ion channels. Right, so the structure of this video then. I will start off with a basic reminder of the structure of a cis loop receptor. I will uh, then go through the main examples in the body of cis loop uh, receptors, and then we'll then talk about the intracellular domain. Okay, and by the way, the intracellular domain is often referred to as the ICD for short. I for intra, C for cellular, D for domain. Right. Okay, so let's start with the basic structure of a cis loop ligand gated ion channel then. Right, so if this is the plasma membrane here, then the cis loop receptor sits in the plasma membrane like so. Here it is. Okay, and it has a pore through the middle, so here's the pore. And then it's made up of five uh, proteins. So uh, all cis loop ligand gated ion channels are made up of five protein subunits. So let me try and draw this one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So what we'll now do is pull out one of these subunits. So let me show this in pink. So you'll pull out one of these protein subunits. Okay, and we're going to look at the structure of uh, this one protein subunit. Okay, so if we now pull out this single protein subunit of the cis loop ligand gated ion channel, and this whole pentamer, as it's called, is the cis loop ligand gated ion channel, but it's not made up of just one protein. Instead, it's made up of this pentamer of five smaller proteins, this pentamer of subunits, as they're called. So now let's have a look at the structure of one of these subunits. So if we look at the starting point of each one of these proteins, here is the amino terminus of the uh, protein that makes up this subunit. Then what it has is a structure known as a cis loop here, which is a kink in the polypeptide held together by disulfide bridges between uh, cysteine residues. And then you have, if this is the phospholipid bilayer, you then have one membrane spanning domain, a second one, a third one, and a fourth one. Okay, and there's the C terminus of the polypeptide. Okay, right, so let's now quickly discuss. Uh, what a cis loop is, so that you understand why these receptors are known as cis loop receptors. So, the cis loop then, basically this is a structure within polypeptides where uh, the polypeptide folds back on itself like this and it's held together by a disulfide bond which forms between two cysteine residues. So if this is this starting portion of the polypeptide, so this bit here, which I've highlighted now in turquoise, is this bit here, and we're now going to draw a bigger picture, more in detail picture. So here now is a cysteine amino acid. So there's the amino terminus of the cysteine amino acid, here's the alpha carbon, and then it has the R group of the cysteine amino acid. Okay, And it would have a thiol group on, but in fact it's going to form a disulfide bond with another cysteine on the opposing strand, so I won't draw the hydrogen, because that comes off when it forms a disulfide bond. Okay, so here's that cysteine amino acid. Then the uh, polypeptide continues. Okay, so this is this red portion now, this here, this loop here. And basically, if I continue the polypeptide onwards, it loops around like so. Okay, so this is this red loop here. Okay, and then it's going to have another cysteine amino acid here, and I'm going to have to stretch this cysteine amino acid out to get it to uh, stretch across this gap and form a disulfide bond with the other one. So I have to start drawing the um, atomic elements bigger. 
Okay, so here's the amino group. Here's the, carbo uh, the alpha carbon. Here is the methylene group. And then here's the sulfur. Now, this is supposed to be identical to this one, but I'm just drawing everything bigger so that I can fill the gap. Okay, and what's going to happen is they're going to form a link like that. And this link here, this is what's known as a disulfide bond. So, di sulfide bond, or you can also call it a disulfide bridge. So a disulfide bond slash a disulfide bridge. Okay, and then off the alpha carbon you have a hydrogen coming off it, and then you have a carboxylic acid group here, and then it continues on. Okay, so in orange here, this is the rest of this loop here. So this is what is meant by a cis loop, basically. This uh, loop in the polypeptide structure that's held together by a disulfide bridge between these cysteine amino acids. So these are both cysteine amino acids. And the uh, three-letter amino acid code for cysteine is CYS, which is why uh, we have this cis loop. Uh, just a bit of background information. The single-letter amino acid code for cysteine is C. OK, that makes sense. So. Uh, basically, all cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels have this pentameric structure, okay, which is why they're also known as pentameric receptors. So you can also know, uh, you can also call these cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels as the pentameric receptors or the pentameric ligand-gated ion channels. They're also known as uh, the nicotinic receptor-like family. Okay, so that's a final name for the cis loop ligand gated ion channels. I'll write it down here. It's known as the nicotinic, sorry, the nicotine receptor uh, like family. Okay, because the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors uh, are members of the cis loop uh, ligand gated ion channel. So, nicotine receptor like family. Okay, right. So, after that, what happens is each one of these protein subunits has these four membrane-spanning domains, like so, which are alpha helices, and those are labelled M1 is the first membrane-spanning alpha helix, then M2 is the second, M3 is the third, and M4 4 is the fourth. Okay, right. So you have these four membrane-spanning alpha helices, and that overall is the membrane-spanning topology of a single subunit. So you make five of these, put them together, and that will make you a cis loop ligand gated ion channel. Now, what different types of cis loop ligand gated ion channel are there? Well, uh, so the most famous examples are the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so these are receptors for nicotine. Okay, oh, what's well, sorry, not receptors for nicotine. They do, nicotine does act as an agonist, but the endogenous agonist is acetylcholine. I do apologize for that. Uh, then uh, you also have the GABA A receptors. These are all nicotinic, sorry, they're all um, cis loop ligand gated ion channels. Uh, and they, they respond to the um, inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA, which is the most common uh, inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. Then you have uh, the glycine receptors in the spinal cord. So instead of GABA, Within the spinal cord, the inhibitory neurotransmitter is glycine. And again, you have ligand-gated ion channels which respond to the glycine, which are uh, glycine receptors. And then finally, you also have the 5-HT3 receptors. Okay? So, uh, these are... Um, these are receptors to 5-hydroxytryptamine, which also has the name serotonin, uh, and they are the ligand-gated ion channel receptors to serotonin. So um, most of the receptors that we have in the brain for serotonin are uh, G-protein-coupled receptors rather than ligand-gated ion channels, so they interact with G-proteins rather than allowing ions to move across the membrane. Uh, so 5-HT3 receptors are this type of receptors that are different from those other types in that they have uh, they couple the um, binding of 5-HT to the increase in permeability of um, the membrane to sodium okay or potassium as well to cations more generally right okay so that's the structure of a basic cis loop receptor let's now discuss um, the intracellular domain of these receptors but we'll talk about that in the next video